uh, taking some time to, to talk with me. How are you doing so far this year? Well, that's like the most loaded <laughs> question I've gotten today. <laughs> um, I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's that's like, totally yeah. fine. <laughs> that's totally fine. Though, but how am I doing? I don't know. How are any of us doing? How are you? I, doing? I, I, I'm doing all right. Thank you. I always start off by asking that because I mean, y'all are, we're all human first and then like actor and player and writer after um, your, your work on the show is really, it, it looks like an emotional toll. It looks like it, it really asks you to draw on some, some really sinister elements to, to channel your character, Betty. Can you just talk about how did you get into that, that headspace without just overwhelming yourself altogether at once? Yeah, I, I think um, I think there were there were a couple of things that were helpful. One is the sort of construction and deconstruction of Betty every day, just sort of physically, like the look of her, the layers and layers of corset and waist cincher and garters and costume and wig and like you know, by the final swipe of the red lipstick, you're like, okay. And now I'm this person, you know, like now I have this distance to be able to step into this person. And then at the end of the day, the reverse happens and I'm left in my sweats and with like crazy hair and that has been under a wig all day. I'm like, okay, now we're good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I can look in the mirror and not, and not be faced with that person. Um, and, uh, and at the same time, I wanted to invite in these really important questions of white womanhood. And I thought it was really like, you know, I've been thinking about, I'm like, there's a world in which LM wrote this, wrote the main villain as a man. You know what I mean? And it's really important that he didn't. Um, and and I, I think it is, there are so many sinister elements. There are so many terrifying elements to Betty. And also um, as white women, we can operate in the world in this really smiling, polite way with, you know, with a great deal of unacknowledged power to destroy lives. And so it was a really like, it felt like a really important exploration to step into as well. Yeah, and a really impactful one too, considering the resonance it has today. Uh, I'm sure if your character had just maybe changed clothes and, and we, we lose a little bit of the, you know, the, the mystical elements, you could place that character in today's world. Yeah, yeah, without, without any, without changing her even at all. You know, I mean, yes, like, as you say, it's like the clothes and then you could put her anywhere in this country and believably she exists. Right. right. Some folks, some folks still hang on to that, that style though, nonetheless. So yes. maybe, maybe she still works in this time. Um, Allison, thank you so much for giving me your time. How's 2021 been for you so far? Yeah, it's sort of um, the, the trappings of hope are coming back again, which I feel like is, it's sort of been missing in now, uh, certainly in the deeper collective. And it's nice to kind of uh, feel all of us sort of uh, climbing out of uh, a grave of sorts and, uh, and getting together again and uh, feeling that there is a, there's hope on the horizon. I think you're absolutely right about that. It's got the appearance of it, right? We can hope that it can just go beyond an, an appearance and really maintain um, thinking about well, that. I, I, yeah, man. And I hope that we learned something from last year that, you know, the, the, the things that, uh, truly important to us. Let's let's hold on to those and let's fight for those. And the, you, you know, I was talking earlier, but I mean, the rat race. Even if you win it, you're still a rat. You know, there, there's yeah. there's there's got to be more important things than just turning that wheel. No, you're 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 absolutely right. And and again, that kind of catastrophe from last year should bring some lessons, right? Lessons that I hope we can we can all learn. Um, Thinking about thinking about your your show, what are what are some takeaways that that you were able to to walk away from after such a such a grueling, um, just series, such a demanding and, and overwhelming plot? Uh, what were some takeaways when when you were finished with this series that you had? Wow, um, 
to be honest, uh, it was an education. You know what I mean? The, from the suffering, um, you know, to, to realize how the hell we got here in the first place and how some things just uh, refuse to change, either because they're just getting swept under the carpet or because um, we, we're just not talking about them. They're, mm -hmm. they're there in plain sight and we're just choosing to not talk about them. So that, that, that and seeing the way that art can elicit change, you know, and seeing what a gorgeous job little Marvin has done in not just creating a genre bending kind of a, a, a show, but really something that we're going to be talking about long after it's, it's sort of done. I really do feel like this is a, a seminal moment in, in television history where we can kind of, uh, hopefully look at ourselves and identify those blind spots that we, we all have. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and again, I, I was thinking about takeaways because this, this series has a lot to, to offer uh, in mm -hmm. that regard. Um, how, how was it managing the past and the past histories and what's going on right now and finding that balance where you are drawing from the past, but again, a lot of what was there is still here. Yeah, look, when you're on set, I, you have to drop a lot of that, whether it's pretense or whatever, what, it, what, it, what you know or don't know, you have to drop that and just purely play the character. And, and, and in this one, like the, for, for my character of George, there is, you know, there's a slow burn to this guy where you think you know him, eh, like, like all the characters, the snap judgment that you kind of make um, on them at the beginning is very rarely what it is by the, by the time that episode's done, let alone the series. You really sort of been taken on a whirlwind with them. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think there's a, an incredible amount of intestinal fortitude that you have to have going into this to realize that you're going to be entertained, you're going to be captivated, but it's also going to make you kind of think about your own life. I'm glad you're bringing that resonance too, thinking about not just the past, but this as an educational lesson on the history and, and of course, a lesson on, on the present. Um, <clears throat> your work on it is, 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 again, really moving, really jarring, like, like the rest of the cast. And, and I'm excited for folks to see this and I'm excited for the, for the work you have um, coming, coming to you in the future. Um, thanks so much again for, for speaking with me, Ryan, and, and I really hope you have um, a really great 2021. Oh, likewise, Jamal. Yeah, thank you. I love that art piece behind you too. It's incredible. My father, my father did that. So thank you. I appreciate it. A little crazy. How how are you two doing? Good. And you? I am doing really well. Thank you. Shahadi, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay surviving with this crazy world that we're living in right now, but you know, we're doing well. Yes, yeah, I, I could imagine that. Um so I wanted to ask Melody, I don't know how much, you know, um, experience you probably have with scary movies or um scary tv shows but how did it feel being in this position uh getting to to experience the horror genre like this what was it like for you it was definitely different from my life mm -hmm. it was crazy there's a lot of racism and a lot of scary stuff. And I've learned a lot of stuff from this show. So, and I'm kind of used to um, scary stuff because I watch a lot of scary movies and scary shows. So there's like, it's like interesting and, you know, you kind of know a lot of stuff. But the thing that makes it different is that racism is in it, mm. right? like when this scary stuff is happening. So that's definitely something different because I've never seen a scary racism show. So this was definitely new to me. I personally have never been in racism. I don't think Shahadi has either, but yeah. Yeah, and you and you you look like you do a really good job too. You feel comfortable there, Shahadi. I know this isn't a new world for you, um, so you're you're coming with some of that that experience, that background. What was it like to to grow from your your past work to this now, and to maybe like add some some flair, maybe add some new things, or maybe things that you learned in this process? 
Yeah, it was absolutely amazing. I mean, from my past uh, doing us, um, I have to say Jordan Peele, he really does work his actors, you know, and uh, it's amazing because you've got this amazing challenge to do horror and to be the um, the victim and also the villain at the same time. Um, so it's um, it's really exciting. And I felt like it was almost like getting me ready to do them. You know, I had already had my experience in doing horror, which I would love to do again. Um, and I feel like I feel like this is one of these shows that I would watch myself. And I think that's exactly why I love it. Yeah, a ton of folks love it. A ton of folks seeing the two of y'all in it. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see the work y'all have coming forward in the rest of, of the series. And of course, whatever little Marvin's got you to um, connected to as well. Melody Shahadi, thank you so much for, for speaking with me. Please have an amazing 2021. And I look forward to everything you're going to be doing in the future. You too. Thank you so much for having us. You too. Thank you so much. How's, 20, how's 2021 treating y'all? Um, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Um, I, I, I feel like I just, I can't complain. You know what I mean? And I just feel so much empathy for people who are having a hard time and had a hard 2020 as well. Um, but I'm just blessed and I'm just counting all my blessings, to be honest. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling same, similar, similar, similar feeling. Just feeling blessed, man. And just like hoping that I can share my blessings with my family and other people where I can and hoping that, you know, that I'm just leading by example, I guess, man, that I can inspire some people to, you know, come out of whatever situation they're in, do you know what I mean? Because we're all going through, we're all going through things. Yeah, and I think we're all really thankful to get to add the two of you to the growing list of inspirational folks of color we get to see on, on television and in film. And so again, uh, myself, just want you all to know I'm, I'm always moved by the work y'all put forward. Um, thinking about the, the series, I, I just wanted to ask, what were, what were some ways that you were able to keep yourself grounded um, considering that this is a, a television show that grapples with the past, with a lot of what's still going on now, and it doesn't matter if you are not acting anymore, you still deal with the reality that, I mean, those themes are in the show and it's, it's outside of the show. How are you able to, to manage without feeling so overwhelmed after, so after triggering, acting? The trigger in peace, but what I think that um, Deborah and I had done really well was like sticking together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We was on a journey together and um, we have, you know, we're experiencing similar things at similar times. It's both our first lead role of a series and, you know, just going through that and then going through the piece as Ashley and Deborah, but then also as Henry and Lucky. So there was so many like parallels um, with our own lives and the characters, you know what I mean? And then we're having to take care of not having to, but like we wanted to take care of Melody and Shahadi on the set because we love them. They're great, talented, act, act young um, actors. And, you know, we had a real family dynamic going on. Um, Deborah. Yeah, we held, we, we literally held each other really tight and we leaned on each other throughout the whole process. And um, that, that was needed. You know, I know we didn't have to, but it was needed. It was necessary. I don't know how we would have come through that time without it, you know. Um, for me particularly, um, I took therapy during the process, honestly. Like I had a therapist and they also had um, a therapist on call for anyone in the cast or crew that needed it, um, which I thought was was wonderful and beautiful and, and I hope to see it more in the industry. Um, but I, I started therapy of my own to kind of make sure that I, would come out of this process and just kind of process, let me say process twice, but really process all the trauma and all the, the, um, the things that had come up through the experience um, properly so I could heal properly. All in all, the work, again, you're, you're putting forward is necessary and in a way therapeutic to, to hear that you're fighting through and you find a means of taking care of, of yourselves in the process. Um, as, a, um, as a nerd of color, there's no place I would rather be than with other nerds of color. So, I appreciate like, that. I was, so I was considering whether it's, it's uh, Mr. Little, Mr. Marvin. Uh, I didn't know how you, um, how you like to be addressed. <laughs> You're a friend. LM is fine. L my friends call me LM. Sounds good, LM. I appreciate that. Uh, for starters, how are you doing this year, 2021? It's looking a lot 
better for the most part compared to last year, but, but how are you feeling? How are you doing? Oh, you know, I think we have to put the kibosh on that question. I think we're all, we're all doing the same. We're all just trying, right? And I, uh, I think we're all, um, we've all earned uh, a respite and I, and I hope we get it soon. Um, but you know, like everybody, my heart breaks for, for what we've endured and what we're going through. And my hope is that we're on the other side of it soon. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, we've all been hoping, many of us are still hoping, um, but, but we're, we're getting there, you know, um, just, just thinking about your really moving series, the last several years, you know, we've seen some really important and, and jarring horror films to be released. Like we've got get out and us um watchmen and, and love lovecraft country um what are you hoping this series can add to that genre of of black folk being at the center of this story and being about them for the first time what are you hoping your audience can can take away from this series as well um my hope would be i mean our ambition anyway was to really root the horrors of our show in something deeply human first um, I'm not particularly interested in just things that are supernatural. I'm interested in things that are emotionally complex and psychologically complex. And I really wanted to put a black family at the heart of a story in all their complexity, their nuance, uh, their fear, their rage, their insecurities, like, you know, real flesh and blood human beings and not just sort of character types. And so that was really what led the day. It was really like, let's just tell a story about a deeply human, deeply flawed, deeply real family, and then let the horrors of the show kind of come from that. And I know we've got uh, the setting in the past, but a lot of what's happening is of course relevant to today. So how much of that was balancing the past thinking about today's cultural and social resonances, and of course, influences from works of the past. How much of that balancing act um, did that look like for you? I think it was all it was all part of the balancing act. I mean, the, the when you set out to make a show like this, I, I as twisted and dark and sad and you know strange as our show often is, it, we really set out to make a love letter to the to the families, to black families, but to the black families of the Great Migration, families who uh, had had left uh, the South um, to go to cities of the North, East, and West, only to be you know greeted with a lot of the same terror they left behind. I think it's a story that's too little told and I wanted to tell it and I think being able to tell that story and wrap it in a story that's also kind of a thrill ride and a bit of a nightmarish kind of journey allows a viewer an access point uh, to a story that they might not have been interested in had it just been a straight piece of history. Um, and so I think horror has a tremendous capability for doing that, uh, for taking things that are complex and social issues that are really hard to stomach, but putting it in the, in the, you know, the body of a thrill ride. Yeah. Right. And, and of course, the work is really compelling. And, and I'm excited for folks to get to see this. And I'm excited to, to finish the series myself. And of course, the work you've got coming out in the future, LM. Uh, thank you so much for thank your you. time today. And, and please have an amazing rest of the year. I appreciate it.